Hello, hello, this is Katina from I Am The One Ministries. Today is Saturday, wow, June 1st. It is 11.42 a.m. here, um, CST, um, Central Standard Time. And um, um, I have a teaching of which uh, was definitely inspired by the Lord um, for me to um, not only help myself um, in remembering what the Lord has taught me, but to also just to help everyone, the body of Christ at large, and all those who are willing to um, really seek the Lord in these times and to learn who he is so that we can know who we are. All right, so um, again, just praying before this message, I'm going to pray again. Um, Holy Spirit, as always, I thank you for gracing me with your presence. I thank you for being here alive and in the midst of us. Um, I'm praying that, you know, where two or more are gathered um, for this video, that you are in the midst of it, Lord God. And I just pray that um, any um, two of us touching and agreeing on, on this thing, that um, whatever's spoken here um, will go forth, especially um, all of those who are seeking you diligently to learn your ways, um, to learn um, who you are. Uh, so that we can know who we are. Um, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are pleasing before your sight and they are all of the things that you would do and say and not of me. And I just pray that every hearer of this word um, will take this word and, and um, it be rooted into to good ground so that it is hallelujah is used um as it should my ear is going into ringing <laughs> hallelujah um um let your angelic being um speak to me let your holy spirit speak to me um just give me all the revelation and everything i need in this time in jesus name i pray um may you um keep everyone protected that is hearing this word and, and and i pray that this word just definitely gets sown on good ground in jesus name amen amen and amen hallelujah um so um i want to touch on the fruit of god's spirit and um it is important for us to know who god is so that we know who we are um in Christ and when we think of Galatians 5 um, verses 22 to 23 you know like what do we think of when we hear um, that infamous scripture um, let me get my trusty tablet here that infamous scripture that says um, Verse 22, starting with Galatians 5 and verse 22, when it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. When we think of that scripture, you know, what do we think? Um, do we think that the fruit of God's Spirit is flesh? Or do you think the fruit of God's Spirit is spirit? And... What is the depth of of that um, that scripture? What is it really telling us? Um, are we only taking the meaning of that scripture at the surface, or are we taking it skin deep? Um, how deep are we going with the understanding of knowing that scripture um, in in detail? So I want to touch on the. I want to touch on the fruit of God's spirit with respect to gentleness because it will it will definitely go into more detail and help us with understanding some of the last videos that I left with respect to um, God working on the Jews and the Gentiles and he's how he's chosen the Gentiles in his time and he's brought about favor um, unto his people with bringing everyone reconciling everybody unto him and especially these gentiles if you can bring the gentiles unto him 
then he he then that's it you you definitely have um reconciled all in all back unto you um because you know as the gentile is known as a, a ruly you know uncontrollable people um or those who are under um underachievers those who don't uh, think that they amount to anything um God wants you to. It's it's just so funny because um, <laughs> I was looking for an apple and I was just sifting through the apples and seeing which one was the best one to eat, the one that looked like like really good and stuff. And so I had I was picking through some and I was just singing, seeing you know a few of them with dings on them and stuff like that. And then I just picked up this this, this particular apple and then the, the spirit of the Lord said, Ah, exactly what I'm looking for. And this apple had it just had dents and just whatever so it definitely wasn't spotless it wasn't blemish free it 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 wasn't without a well it did it didn't really have any wrinkles i mean i really wouldn't have picked up the apple if it had wrinkles on it um then it would have been really old so and then the lord was showing me how basically he could take you know even that apple that i was looking in judging and not wanting to eat it that he could take that and he can turn it around and 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 that just he was just showing me like his love and gentleness even from there so um i'm going i'm going to read um for you um the lord had led me to write this book and this is a workbook and so i'm going to read um what the Holy Spirit had downloaded into my spirit and understanding what gentleness means um, from the perspective of the Spirit of the Lord and how we can easily confuse it because we as mere humans, everything that we, we do is of our flesh, everything. Um, this is why the Spirit of the Lord couldn't strive with man. He wasn't going to do it for so long because man only seeks to... Um, satisfy his flesh um it, it, it lusted against the spirit and there is no way around it unless you go and do the grafting and the rehabilitation and the reconciliation that god is doing in this hour so um one of the reasons why um i'm going into this is definitely um to give you a better perspective on handling situations from this point forward and so that you can move into the righteousness that I know you can do because you'll be you you'll really be able to grasp you know what I'm saying when I'm when I you know read this and say what I have to say so um and I have some scripture that we're going to go over so I'm just going to um, get through this and um, just pray that this edifies you and it gives you some good food to eat. Um, ironically, um, my day starts off with getting spiritual nourishment. It, I start off with getting the, um, the first fruits from the Lord. I give him my first fruits. He give me his and I'm getting this nourishment and this provision. Um, I've had water, took communion, hadn't even had natural food because I'm still spiritually fed technically and, and able to go off on what the Lord has given me. And I'm just so thankful for it. So um, knowing who you are first and foremost being spirit, um, your flesh, man, the, the scripture is so true. You know, um, man does not need bread alone to survive and that and i really believe that is so true so um in going in this section of the book with respect to uh gentleness um the fruit of god's spirit so um i'm going to read what the holy spirit downloaded into my spirit so gentleness the first thought that came to mind when looking at the word gentleness was seeing a vision of a baby of a baby kitten or a parent holding their newborn baby and telling the older brother or sister to be gentle. 
we apply gentleness when handling something, right? At most, mankind's practice of gentleness stems only from its superficial sensory. So yeah, we're only going to apply gentleness as to, you know, seeing, holding something gentle like a baby. Or, you know, when you look at, you know, a baby of, of any respect, whether it be an animal, whether it be a human, um, even an egg, we're being gentle. Um, and we're only going to um, apply gentleness when it comes to our superficial sensory. And um, so we're only going to apply gentleness when it comes to our superficial sensory when it's really a bit deeper than that. For instance, we are gentle when we find ourselves in the most delicate positions, like holding something really fragile. A baby, as I said, an egg. But gentleness goes further than the surface, similar to when you issue forgiveness. Or even when you help someone with a transgression, as Jesus did in John chapter 8, when he assisted the woman who was caught in adultery. And so... I go on to quote, but the fruit of the spirit is gentleness against such there is no law. God had a law of loving him first. This law was broken down to say love him first. But when it was given to Adam and Eve, he said to eat of this fruit. Um, you can have everything else but not that what with Jesus he said love the Lord thy God with all your heart soul mind you know love me first and then love others as yourself those are two commanding laws it was no different from the tree of life Um, because when you delve into good and evil that's that's what we're not supposed to partake of that's anything else other than you know life and loving the Lord they're they're one and the same thing but you're going to see them different because of the different context that they mm, they one was it seemed like it was more visual but in 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 reality, um, the tree of life basically was it is the Lord, and uh, you know good and evil is just going beyond Him or what He has said. So um, we're just doing you basically. So. When we look at the law of his fruit of gentleness, you know, we have the fruit of the spirit. Oh, I was supposed to have an apple. Oh, man, Lord, I should have asked. Was I forgetting anything? So I was supposed to have an apple. And you know how an apple is sliced into several slices. The Lord... Let's just say if we just use an apple um, to signify the fruit, it's one fruit. But when we, if we were to take a slice and take that one slice for it to be gentleness, now how would we work up gentleness? Like what, what do we, what, what should we understand out of, out of the the fruit of the spirit? How should we understand gentleness? And that's only taking a part, a piece of the fruit of the spirit, and so. In looking up the word gentleness using um, Webster Noah's 1828 online dictionary, gentleness says dignity of birth, little used, genteel behavior, softness of manners, mildness of temper, sweetness of disposition, meekness, kindness, benevolence, tenderness, mild treatment. And that was taken from, again, Noah Webster's 1828 online dictionary did i say that right the first time <laughs> Noah webster i probably said webster no was i don't know anyway um Noah webster's 1828 online dictionary and so um 
looking at that i like to use that one because it's definitely more closer to what we have to understand um the bible and the lord and you know especially within those times so much has been watered down or just diluted with just so much um it, it isn't concise as it can be to understanding what god has meant you know and what you know the words that he would use so and and the reason why i use um galatians 5 22 and verse 23 in the king james version because these hold true to what god would say and um just as i'm speaking to you now we got to understand that our voice our voice consists of sound and our voice consists of like spoken words and so again you know my voice by sound but then do you also know my voice by the words that i would use and that's how you would know i am who i am because the words that i would use um it's just like knowing um who was that arnold from the different strokes and you'd be like what you talking about willis we know that would be arnold because he would say what you talking about willis and those are his words if you would try to sit up here and say that you were Arnold and you didn't say that if you didn't say that those words that, that Arnold would say and you're trying to say that you were Arnold and you're trying to you know take his identity and saying that you're Arnold you're then a liar because first of all you might have Arnold's sound and voice but do you have the words that he would typically use so there's two ways that god's voice can be identified just as well as ours what is some typical slogans and things like that that you would say that you would use like what is your choice your word choice um how do you usually form a sentence um you know what would be hallelujah the presence of the holy spirit i thank you lord i thank you for your presence um hallelujah have your way have your way what is what is what word choice would you use when you know um when uh delivering a message when being gentle what what you know what would how would you deliver it um and e just anyway um how would you deliver what you know you would say it, it's it's definitely something that would be significant to you will be something that would be um um it would have a what would it a sentiment to you and so and it, it makes you who you are so um again helping you to understand god's voice with not only sound but you know word choice um he does that with each of us and each of us as each of us are different um this is how you'll know your voice and his voice and you because it's 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 definitely specific and it's specific towards you it's it's also his strategic way of um not only identifying with you but having a relationship with you and and it's just so amazing that you know this is how he chooses to love on you to treat you like it's it's all you and nobody else and this is how he is and you know whether he's communicating to you you know whether it's audibly whether it's you know um pictorially you know with visions and signs and you know just different types of like wonders or sounds or music colors whatever it is you know he will speak to you in a way that is between you and him and it's significant and it, and it has more rele relevance relevance to do with um you and your life um whether it be pictures movies and events or occasions anything that you've experienced this is how the lord will speak to you and this is his voice so um I definitely don't take it lightly when it comes to communicating with him and communing with him um, and coming up to speak to him basically on his level and, and using um, the, the, the means that will get me closest to him with respect to that. And so um, 
as I read for you the definition of what meek uh, gentleness is um, and, and why the King James Version is the closest and, and what he said, um, because some other versions will have different things and they won't have gentleness. This is what the Lord meant. And, and this is what identifies the fruit of his spirit. Uh, if you don't see gentleness, this is why we don't operate in gentleness is because, you know, if, if we go on by other scriptures, we are not going to know how to apply it. But when you get closer to the, the, the closer you get to the truth of what the Lord meant and, and what is the true, the true, um, core of his spirit and and one of them being gentleness now you 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 understand him and you'll understand scripture better too because i'm going to take you to scripture and as again you can see when um jesus assisted the woman and um who was caught in adultery in in john 8 verses 1 through 11 he 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 was applying the very fruit of himself if you read off another scripture that doesn't have the word gentleness gentleness in it then how will you know how to operate in the fruit of God's spirit? How will you know to apply the fruit of his spirit if you using the wrong? This is why so many of us in sin and, and because we're re reading different texts and different Bibles and, and not reading his word and what he would say, um, where, where we're acting in, we're acting. We're not going according to his way. The King James Version, if you stick to that, it's the closest to, you know, it's, it's something that's approved closest to what he has said and what we will say. And um, you definitely won't be in sin, um, especially like, let's just say um, if you don't get me wrong. Now, I've started in the new King, King James Version. I didn't start in any other version, but the new King James Version. But if you're using words, words to make it simplify, you know, think about when Jesus, when he used parables and things like that, like he didn't make anything too simplified, you know, um, because he wants you to come up. Um, remember when I was talking about the, the difference between the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews, of course, he's humbling them to the point to where they, they bring it down a notch to love. Um, and the, the Gentiles. He's humbling them to bring them up and um, to love. And so um, with that understanding, we have to know that at some point we are going to have to grow. We're going to have to mature. And, and, and how do you do that? You do make adjustments. You don't, if, if you definitely know something, then you know to be done, you know to mature. So when, uh, when the new King James Version helped me enough to the point to where I can get to the King James Version, then that's, that's, this is all I use. So, and I see all those other versions, the same as the enemy, um, you know, deceiving Eve by switching God's word around. And that's what happened. You, you have a version that's so closest to what God would say, what you're talking about, Willis, <laughs> hallelujah, to the point to where, um, this is what helps you to get to know him. And then you have all these other versions to where it can deceive you like how the enemy did Eve in the garden to where you'll be at enmity against the Lord because you're using gentleness the wrong way. Then, yeah, we are unknowingly sinning against the Lord and at least some of us. But if you get this word and you hear what I'm saying, you will know to make adjustments now, especially by making a commitment to at least saying okay i'm gonna use this to this certain extent but i want to i want to mature and begin to use the, the true word of the lord and so i can know his ways so we can stop acting we got to stop acting we got to start knowing the lord's way and that's how the lord helped me we we, we always reacting we got to start being proactive by knowing the lord's way and and so um that's one of the things I told the Lord. I said, you know what, Lord? I don't want to, I don't want to act no more. I don't want, I said, show me the way. I don't want to act out no more. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of acting out. Show me a way. And, and this is, this has really helped me and the Lord, you know, really come to a, a good, um, understanding on, on how to respect each other. And, and it's so cool. 
how he loves you so much just like how he said you know Jacob I love and Esau I hate it he 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 loved he may have loved Jacob because you know of the righteousness that was in him he he hated Esau he didn't he didn't really like what Esau was about but he respected him and and because of that respect this is why he's He's making the adjustment to include the Esau's of this time. He's including the Cain's of this time. And and even with Cain, he's applied gentleness. He said, you know, why is your countenance so low? He's like, don't you know if you would do well, you would be approved too? But Cain wasn't hearing that. So, but let's move on. So, with respect to gentleness. So, man's general use... Um of gentleness doesn't have meaning compared to that of God's demonstration of gentleness of gentleness when I think of our uh, father's character of gentleness I think of him applying it to someone's level of brokenness see that's the difference with God's gentleness so um, we look at we 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 use gentleness with respect to our flesh but God will he's he's more intrinsic internally um as opposed to the external if you're broken if something has broken you god will apply a respective amount of gentleness to help fix whatever it is that needs to be fixed um you know with love and respect and and that's what that's what we're we're um that's what we're missing um we are so used to trying to fix stuff on the outward that we we forget about the inward and that's why there's such an imbalance and so the same way we would naturally handle a newborn baby is the same way our heavenly father supernaturally handles our brokenness brokenness no matter who they are and what they done god's gentleness soothes their heart of brokenness god's gentleness is consulting all levels of transgressions with the greatest gift of salvation if you believe in god's gentleness you are truly free indeed this form of gentleness is just is is so amazing and and he's proven it time and time again if we apply this in every day situations in our lives we will be more than likely to not only keep the enemy out of our lives but truly save someone um from even engaging with the enemy in their own lives and and, and pretty much evicting them out of his out of their lives for good um one of the things that the lord um um helped me to see was that gentleness helps to keep someone from further transgression if we apply the level of gentleness we like the same way the same way we will up uh, you know will hold something gentle like a baby if we apply the same type of understanding of gentleness to someone's brokenness as far as um a hurt or whatever it is that they can be going through we would we would be successful just as the way that we were able to handle a baby and and allowing it to fully grow and mature and be nurtured um physically we would be able to do the same thing with somebody with um internally um intrinsically um and, and not just extrinsically um and so i want to continue on reading I'm, I'm almost done um i'm reading this part page 103 with respect to gentleness this is the workbook and i know that he's going to have us teaching this and so i'm going to continue on because he does mention some good stuff so the best visual definition of God's gentleness that I can give you is the very last moments of Jesus' life. Read and quote in the scripture. As one of the male factors, male factors which were hanged railed on him saying, 
If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Could you imagine um, the, the video I left the day before was, you know, when I talked about where, where souls were um, before Jesus, how there are many on this earth, so many souls that are in between the realms and things like that are on this earth. He was the first soul that got to go to heaven. Hallelujah. He was the first soul that got to go to heaven with the Lord. And that's just so amazing. Like, could you imagine that? Like, he was the first witness. The first witness of Jesus, Jehovah. He, like, it's just so amazing. Um, so, I want to continue on. And that's, I read from Luke 30, 39 through 43. That was the first scripture that I quoted. Now it's Luke 39 through 43. No, wait a minute. Luke, wait a minute. I don't even have the chapter. Yikes. Um, I don't know a chapter, but you can, you can Google it. Um, these iconic moments are exemplary of God's gentleness because even up until the point of death for both Jesus and the sinner, God is still merciful in forgiveness of sins. And like his father, Jesus was still working, ministering to a sinner until death. L look at that. Even until death, even up until Jesus' death, he was still applying God's mercy. Um, he just, you know, he was still ministering, even on the cross. He just like, well, I'm, I'm sitting, I'm here, I'm going to do something. I'm going, somebody going to go with me. And, and, and hence, you know, I am the one ministries. I am. Um, and, you know, how we seek to get the one or whomever. And, um... Again, I said this before, one witnessed where he he was and one witnessed where he wasn't. And so um, even that sinner, too, who reaped condemnation in a different realm other than heaven, um, he will he will know, too, because even after all of this has took its course, God will reconcile him unto him as well, too, because he will understand what it is to me, what it, what it will mean to be without the spirit, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the true and living God. I'm going to continue to read on. Uh, I have another scripture here um, from John chapter five, verse 30 it says, I can of, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear, I judge as, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father, which has sent me. And so Jesus didn't do anything that was outside of God's will. He he did everything within the will of God. Um, he was the first example of bringing God's kingdom on the earth as it is in heaven. And applying Jesus uh, applying gentleness up until the end of his death um that's a wonderful kingdom to be a part of um I'm going to go on um and this is the last paragraph in this um in this section mankind's attempt at gentleness needs serious improvement as fleshly beings naturally we gravitate more toward living in gentleness from our mother's perspective and not from the spiritual perspective of our heavenly father so in this in this book um our mother's um perspective is the flesh the earth of which we were formed from and so everything is more superficial everything is more extrinsic extrinsic and everything is more visual we see gentleness we we don't we don't we don't I don't want to say we see gentleness. We don't feel it in a sense. We, we're supposed to, it's supposed to be more intrinsic 
it's supposed to be um, more deep. I'm hearing inner bowels. Um, it's it's not on the surface. It's gentleness is not anything that like you literally can see um, physically. It is something that you can't see, um, but you 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 are sensitive. Um, um, what was that the word, Lord? Spiritually, but you you're handling it, um, w you know, with all sense, you know, sincere, um, with sensitiveness, um, sincerity. I'm hearing sincerity. I believe sensitivity. Um, but that, that's what gentleness is all about. Um, we are supposed to understand our Father's way of life, which is that fruit of that. He, he said, to partake of this fruit. And not of the fruit of knowledge of good and evil. And that's how we apply gentleness. And I'm going to go into that in these other scriptures. So let me finish finish this off and that, that's it. Um, I just wanted to help you understand the difference between our, our mother's perspective and our father's perspective. And our mother's side, again, is the mother earth, um, the flesh of which, you know, how we all operate under because we're dead to spirit. And we're more like because we're dead to spirit, we're more alive to 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 sin and the flesh than anything else that we don't know our heavenly father's perspective. And his perspective is 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 not of the surface, it's definitely skin deep. So, um, this last couple of sentences in the book. So after grasping the spirit's true fruit of gentleness, we need to do an evaluation of what it is, what it will take to begin making a and um, a 180 degree turn um, toward the genuine walk in, in that direction. Simply put, having a lifestyle of gentleness is a daily, um, is, a, um, is a daily living in subtle applications of charity. And we, we definitely must apply God's love um, which the word he uses is charity because it is, it is a charity. It is um, it is, um, when we think of charity, we think of donations. It's, it's, it's a giving. Charity is giving, um, of yourself and it, it is a sacrifice. And that's definitely what Jesus has done. He, he gave and, um, his love was definitely charitable. It was, a, it was a sacrifice. It was sacrificial. Um, so I want to go into these scriptures. Um, there's a few of them here, but they definitely make a good point. And I want to, um, in adding to what the Lord downloaded into my spirit, when when I said, he said, gentleness, gentleness helps um, to keep someone from further transgression. Um, when we apply gentleness in, in helping someone to keep from further transgression, transgression you're helping to keep them from you know going forward with um doing something else that you know you know just saving them from more sin it's just like i just see a pile of the word sin just like being added on added on added on added on, added on. but when you when you especially you if you know better to do better to keep someone else from doing it um then you can keep them from further transgressing and that's what charity is all about that's what donating yourself that's what giving of yourself is all about when you can if you know enough to keep yourself out of it but then now to now you know go in that 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 barrel of crabs and then help pull someone else out so i'm going to read galatians oh this was the other one he said besides gentleness helps to keep someone from further transgression Gentleness is treating every situ every gentleness is treating every hostile situation as if there's a loaded gun pointed in your face. 
Hallelujah. And I said this before because the, the Holy Spirit put it down into my spirit. And he said, um, he said, you know, he said, think of like, like having a loaded gun up in your face. Like if somebody was to have a loaded gun up in your face, like would you be sitting up there ready to just go pop off at the mouth? So now put yourself in a situation to where there isn't technically a loaded gun, but because of the hostility of the situation, like let's just say you're at ease, you're at a calm, but the, the other individual isn't at a calm. They're hostile. They're, you know, they're coming at you like they got a loaded gun. And, and technically their mouth, their words is like a loaded gun because words of curse and anger and everything else, it has life as well too. And it can easily tempt you and engage you into that very situation of which you would want to stay out of because otherwise not only the enemy will have them, but they'll have you too. So that's why we are to know how to apply this, the fruit of God's spirit of gentleness um, when we walk, especially, you know, it, it, that gentleness is supposed to be with us while we, when we have the whole armor of God on. And um, we are to um, just um, ensure that that's what we carry in um, with us when we have the armor on with, with you know, having the Lord's proof. And so um, Galatians 6 and 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one into the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. I just said this. So, yeah. So, you don't, you know, you got to be mindful of, so if somebody else is taken in a fault, um, and if you're the spiritual one, you know, you have to restore that, that person, um, in 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 um in spirit and, and in a spirit of meekness um meekness in, in the sense is it's just like laying down your life like like giving into that person it's just like that that's basically what abel did he didn't engage with cain's um way of doing what he did um otherwise you know he would have um defended himself but but he went down he he pretty much um he 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 gave his life for his brother he technically is he was his brother's keeper and and that's what i was asking the lord this morning and i was like oh now i like really get it because abel was the the ten you know he was the um he tended to the sheep he um you know cain was more worldly more earthly that's why you know, his, his offering came from, you know, he was a tiller of the ground. He was just, you know, what the Lord is showing me, like the people that's about the world, they all about the Benjamins. They all about what the world t could give because that's all they know and how to operate. Um, they don't know how to operate in, in, in what is, um, what has value to the Lord, which is keeping of people, which is keeping of, um, God's ways and, um, and this is why um, when when God asked Abel, no, when God asked Cain, where was Abel? He was like, am I my brother's keeper? And so, and I was like, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Because I was getting it from the natural sense, but I wasn't getting it from the spiritual sense. And yes, um, what basically um, Abel did, he he technically was his brother's keeper um as a keeper of the sheep as the, the the um you know the one who tended so he didn't engage in the battle with Cain he literally um allowed for his soul to be saved um on the earth and his descendants and so um and I believe that this that act right there allow for what God is doing now with um hallelujah with even just considering those um who um see themselves as underachievers as as you know because that's one of the first things that Cain said like you know they're going to be after me and this that and the other and even God then was merciful 
even he was gentle then and saying, all right, anybody come after him, then they're going to be cursed and this, that, and the other. He still had that, that, that gentleness, even though Abel's blood was crying out through the ground to avenge him, you know, to the Lord, he was still gentle because at the end of the day, Cain is still his too. And so Galatians 6 and 1 is, is just so good. So if we know that somebody is overtaken by a fault, um, we which are spiritual, which we know we are able. That's why I say I'm well blessed and able. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because I, I claim being an able as much as I can as I die daily. Um, you know, we are to restore one in a spirit of meekness, considering that ourselves and making sure that we don't engage in that because the devil will have us too could you imagine getting into something with somebody and then now you're ensnared by the enemy and then what if you die how are you going to die you want to die with the enemy having you and you know unless the lord is even merciful then too and and you know um because where 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 would you know abel have been you know so um yeah so um, 1 Peter 3 and 15 says, But sanctify uh, the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And uh, many of us, I guess if we are asked, I believe if this is what this is saying, you know, sanctifying our hearts in, Lord, in the Lord God. Um, and be ready to always give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope. So if someone asks you of of your beliefs and of, you know, why do you have such a hope? And, you know, many people might see it as offensive or they don't want to talk about. They'll say they don't want to talk about religion. But and, and indeed, you are talking about a relationship. We'd be so quick to talk about our relationships about you know with our husbands our, our wives our children our mothers our fathers but what about our heavenly father we should be so yes he said with meekness um and fear and reverence for the lord to just speak about our relationship with the lord is not a religion we should we should be so in love to talk about god our father and not doing it in a in a in in from the standpoint to where we're, we're being hostile or offended or whatever have you. Um, and that's the opportunity to help someone to understand gentleness. Um, 2 Timothy 22, I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 through 26 says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God per adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Wow. And, and so, yeah, it truly is for us, up to us to apply that spirit of gentleness um, and, and do it in by all means like to teach to be patient don't be so quick to you know like snap back but to you know at, at any given point hallelujah the Lord is reminding me of something when I was oh my goodness when when COVID had not too long ago happened well not too long ago happened when when it first happened and you know some of us were getting back into the swing of things. Well, I had to pay an easy pass bill or it was something. I had to go to an easy pass in, in downtown Newark when I was in New Jersey. And it was it was something that was happening in the in the line in back of me because somebody had ditched somebody else and I was like right there and my heart was just like going, fluttering and I was like, Oh no like what do I do what do I do like what do I say because I wanted to make sure that I like this was the uh, opportunity now for me not to sit up here and, and allow something to you know just happen when when people were going at it and it was this was an opportunity for me to step in and, and be a brother and 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 diffuse the situation and then so the people that I did not realize that the people um I was going to let the people that were in the wrong get in front of me 
but he he was just like no like the lord showed me because i didn't know what was going on the lord showed me like exactly who to let get in front of me because i was in the front of both of them and i was about to let the people who were like like doing was transgression progressing so i was able to diffuse and 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 um literally be between the two people basically that was in it i was just like you know what why don't y'all just get in front of me because it was a ditching situation and um they was allowing somebody to cut in the line and do whatever and then it got in front of you know somebody so actually at in actuality the people that was in the wrong was behind me and then the people that it was the they was behind them and they had allowed somebody to get in the line and then that was like you know um it was like pushing them back further or whatever have you so the people that was being pushed back further the lord told me to put them up in front of me and like boy just by me um um just by me just um intervening in that moment i was able to um I was able to, you know, act in gentleness the, the way the Holy Spirit has led me to. Um, let me see. The others are Philippians 4 and 5. Let me see. We got John 13. Um. And 34 through 35, um, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another. I'm just going to touch on that one because, um, um, on that one, oh, it's two, it's two more. Um, I'm going to touch on that. So, because this is what the Lord is expecting of us, he, this is why it's so hard to identify his, his disciples, his people, because we're not applying the appropriate gentleness that we should, um, when understanding where someone is in their walk with God and, and, and knowing him and, um, and, and why we shouldn't be so quick to, um, like how Jesus said, like, I don't apply any type of judgment. I just do what the father tells me to do. And if we're not doing what he expects us to do, just like how I didn't know in, in the line in that instance, I didn't know who was in the wrong, whatever. I'm just like, Holy Spirit, what to do, what to do, what to do. I was just like tripping because I'm just like, oh, this is about to get ugly fast. And I was just like, Lord, what to do, what to do. And then even the people that weren't in the wrong, that were being wrong, she was like, Lord, she was like, I don't want to get, I don't want to have to get ugly out here. Because <laughs> after that, we shared you know, and we found out that we were sisters in Christ and it was just so amazing. But, um, this is how we truly prove like we are of the Lord's, especially when we apply that spirit of gentleness. Um, and so this is, this is how people will see love. This is how people will know love. And this is how people will know that we are the Lord's. And so when I read John 13 and 34, um, the new commandment that I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. We got to remember somebody loved us first. This is, this is being applied to us first. And that's the thing that we forget. We forget that we still have this daily love that's being given to us every day, fresh and anew and the forgiveness and the gentleness. And then how come we can't do it ourselves? It's just like how in the kingdom, when that, when the, when the man owed the king some monies or whatever, and the king showed him mercy, but then when somebody owed him money, he didn't show them mercy. And we, we have to understand that. Listen, this is, this is a continuum thing right here. We can't think we just more self-righteous than anybody else because, you know, of, our own self-righteousness and that's what some of these other scriptures say here too um let me see i already read galatians 5 22 um through 23 but it goes into 26 um as well so i want y'all to go over these so james 2 12 through 13 so ye speak and so and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty for he shall have judgment without mercy that hath shown no mercy and hath rejoiced 
against judgment. Wow. So yeah, basically, um, James 2, 12 and 13 says, so, so speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. We are supposed to do as we are free. If we know that we are free, this is what we're expected to walk in. If you're not walking in freedom, how can you do or live in freedom? And, and this is how we have to, to, you know, show others. But if we're not merciful, we're not going to be given mercy. And, um, you know, it's not going to be given to us if we're not operating in it. And so that's the first thing. That's what gentleness is all about, being merciful. Um, Colossians 3, 13, 3, 12 13. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, for forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Hallelujah. Basically, if we know we are the Lord's, we got to put this on daily. It's a daily sacrifice. It's a daily laying down your life. You literally have to lay your life down. If you, every day you got to walk in knowing that you're going to be confronted by a loaded gun. Whether it's like that physically or not, more than likely, you have to see it like that. Like it's being done like that every day. But yours is like, I surrender. I surrender all. And then basically when you surrender and you engage in such gentleness, um, you will, you will prove that you are the Lord's, that you're not, it's, it's, it might even like confuse somebody like, wait, hold up. Like, so she like, cause people who are at fault or. Or God, because you never know what somebody's situation is. They might be on the deep end because they've been wrong so much. And so gentleness is about getting to the root of why the hostility is taking place in the first place. Because we've all been there. And so it is our responsibilities to diffuse, to help diffuse the situation and be the light of the world. So Jesus is the light of the world. John 8, 12 through 13. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is this is that tree of life right here. That's the light right there. That's the life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. That record is not true. The darkness can't comprehend the light. The darkness cannot even understand or begin to. You see how they came back at him. But this is this is the type of situation that we might um encounter so we definitely have to seek the wisdom of the lord just like how i did in that easy pass line and we i was just sitting up here like oh lord i just you know and that was just like th that was definitely when i was just young and i'm just so thankful i was able to allow the lord to speak to me and and shown so much maturity in that time and um, I think after going through so much warfare, I think God definitely been um, compromised. But the Lord is showing me again. He's showing many of us. We've been going through so much stuff and tests and trials. I really believe that that the fruit, it 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 we've lost it a bit. So God is reeling us back in and helping us to apply the love because otherwise, in His chosen. People are not going to know him. They're not going to know us. They're not going to know who we are. They're not going to know who he is. So we must embody God's love. Um, and the last scripture I want to leave with you is Proverbs 15. Um, read that whole chapter because it's a contrast of the upright and the, the wicked. But I'm going to read the first three verses and I'm going to end it off with that. So Proverbs 15 verses 1 through 3 says, Soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievant, grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise use knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding evil and good. Hallelujah. If you know that God is watching your every move, he's watching everybody's every move. Wouldn't you want to ensure that the move that you're making is the move that he's seeking? 
and you want to be on his right side since he is the one that could kill the soul and the body and 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 not be so you know um for wanting to um to crawl and and then and, and, then do a dance with somebody who who wants to entangle you in the snare of the enemy because that's the enemy's design when he when he engages people when he is he's taking advantage of other people the thing is to help these people up out of those situations so that we can bring them into the light we are supposed to be the darkness in the light we're not supposed to be the light being you know pulled into the darkness um the lord we have to give him more credit than that and and, and stay away from the darkness and and just retain in our light die daily learn the gentleness of the lord and and so you can help someone else um come from up out of the snare of the enemy and so that they can help others too so i pray that this message helps you to understand the fruit of god's gentleness um of such there is no law and i pray that you can begin your walk in gentleness by taking these things into consideration you got to look at every instance of your life um that is is like a loaded gun situation and be ready to submit and and so and to see ask the lord like right away i went to my head i was just like what, what, what to do i wasn't i don't i think i was like hannah i don't know if i was necessarily saying anything in my mouth but or but like just like talking to the lord in my head and right away he gave me the answer i was about to put the wrong people in front of me and he was just like no not them <laughs> and he did too and it was just so it was he said it so sternly and he was like no put them in front of you and but he did give me the answer and i was just so surprised and i was like whoa like this was so cool and then learning that they were christian too and i was just like this is what helped so like in that in that instance the lord know i needed him and 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 he needed me and it was i and it and it helped bring peace to what could have been like an irate situation and so we got to know how if not only to be the light in other people's lives but to be the light you know in our own daily lives every day because he's looking for somebody hallelujah speak lord speak he's looking for um he's looking for his people um and he's looking for us to be true carriers of his voice and and who he is um so if we were to operate in the true fruit of the lord's spirit we we definitely you know in order to embody love like let's start with gentleness and i really believe that this is why the the spirit of the lord is put in this this um the, the first part of his fruit on me to speak on and for us to gravitate towards and for us to grasp so we can walk in it so i pray that this message blesses you and i just pray that you use it and you walk in it in meekness and in love in jesus name amen